Hey guys, I'm Canning here. I'm about to show you guys a PvZ in-depth replay. Um, we are facing Root Cats this game, and uh, I'm just going to give you my thoughts, my tips, my tricks on what's going through my mind when I'm playing a PvZ. So let's get it started. I'll probably keep, I'm going to keep it on about times four-ish and slow it down and pause it, and I really think in-depth. So for the opener, basically what I like to do in PvZ is almost always I'll go 17 gateway, 17 nexus. Now this can get punished by um, some speedling openers, some 14, some 12 gases, 12 pools, things like that. And you run into a situation where, oh, you run into a situation where, you know, you can get punished occasionally. And it really, it depends on what you're facing on the ladder. Now, if you're facing a lot, as you see, I'm going 17 nexus, 17 pool here, 17 gateway, 17 nexus, 17 gateway, because this just seems the most sturdy build. I mean. A lot of times I face a Zerg going three hatch before pool, so a lot of times I won't get punished here. And maybe on maybe on ladder you're facing a lot of builds where you are getting punished. You know they're going a lot of early speed links, a lot of early pools, and maybe you face that a lot. But for me, I don't face that that often, so I like to take a quick nexus because the majority of the time this quick nexus is the right choice. I mean, occasionally maybe we get punished, but for the most o most often for me, taking an early nexus is the right thing to do. So basically, my PVZ game plan right now is actually not all in, not do anything. I like to go for a very greedy third. And basically, I won't always go for the fast three third, but see, now we'll look here. I'll pause it here. So when I'm in his base, I have some key things that I look for, right? I look for, of course, three hatch before pool. I see three hatches. I mean, depending on the hatchery timings. I mean, this, but the biggest thing you really want to scout when you're in a Zerg base is the gas and how much gas is being mined. So I get to his base. I see his guys are being taken. Sometimes they won't get the geyser yet. And then it's just it's pretty much a free third base. They really can't punish it. In this case, though, he does get a gas. And there are some Ravenger Lang builds he can do that can put a lot of pressure on me, right? So there's some builds that are strong here. But basically, this is my indicator. And, I mean, if, if he hasn't taken a base and he's on two bases, right, and he's got a gas mining, I would not go for this really greedy third. I'd probably take, I'd go up to three gateways, a Twilight, a Robo, go up into Disruptor Tech. And it's all about it's all situational about what you scout. But for this game in particular, I scout, okay, he's getting gas pretty late, getting pulled after three hatches. I'm pretty sure I can put down a Nexus and three pylons before he actually does anything. So you'll see I just keep probing up, keep probing up, and it's a situation as well. When you face three hatches before pool like this, that you wanna you wanna be as greedy as possible. This zealot not mandatory. You can actually wait for an adept. If it if it is the strongest thing to do, you can wait for an adept. Um, it's, it all depends, though. It really all depends. So for this game, I did go for sell it into stalker, just because sometimes it makes me feel a little bit safer. I can keep it at the ramp at all times. But you're gonna see, I just go for a fast third here. You see one gauge into three nexus is kind of how I play it. I do have about you can see it's happening at about 3:15 when I take my third base. About eight to ten workers when you have uh, your natural is when I usually take it. You gotta be careful though, you don't wanna get it too early when you haven't even really started mining this yet. So we're gonna see I'm fully saturated here, 16 out of 16, three on each gas. And we see I'm eight out of 10, I'm gonna keep getting probes. I mean, like the pro we're still getting probes and we never stop our probe production to make this. So then we get this at about 3.15. We take our third. And now we've lost all vision on the map, right? We're not scouting it. Right, we see him going for speed links, although of course I don't know what he's going for. So to make this a little bit safer, you get a couple pylons, right? I see his overwoods coming in to scout me. I at least double pile on it to make myself feel safe. And, I mean, this is a situation, right, as well, where I like... I mean, sentries are not that common for some levels, but I like to get still one to three sentries just because I put... It puts you in a situation where, especially versus Zerg, you really don't know what they're going for a lot of the time. And scouting is so big. Using hallucinated phoenix are so important. To know if they're going meters, if they're going lurkers, if they're going ravagers, if they're going quick ultras. There's so many different tech paths that you can face against Zerg. And getting a couple centuries out, three centuries, I like to do is really important. So, this game, we can see I actually opened Robo and then a bunch of gateways. And the thing is, you do want to get a bunch of gateways after taking this third base. You can get them at the front, a little bit riskier, but you want to get a bunch of gateways. I still haven't taken my gas, right? Because I'm not really getting anything tech and heavy, right? I'm just getting robo. I don't have a forge. I'm just getting gateways. And it's the thing where you do want a lot of gateways to help defend yourself in case you're getting attacked. And I do eventually get a forge as well. This game, I think I actually get a late twilight. You could you could fit in a twilight somewhat early, but I actually do like, especially with a fast third base style, if you're going to go for a build like this, you really want 
to get a robo first in my opinion because blink will not save you that well versus disruptors it won't save you for that well versus a decent amount of things where disruptor will save you and a lot of the times the disruptor is more important to have early to save you I also will say that a big thing I, as well to help stop some of these adept pushes is actually make some or these ravenger roach pushes is make some adepts they're pretty good at fending these things off and of course good pylon placement so now I finally get my twilight council and okay this is this is our big point in the game right this is a big point 530 my sentries come out I went, I went zealot soccer sentry 530 we scout now when you go into his base there are a few things you are really looking for like when you scout you want to be scouting you don't want to be scouting just to scout you want to be thinking about what he's going for so I put this on normal and go through my mind of what I'm seeing here so my biggest indicator is on how many gases he's on if he's on about three gases it's almost always going to be pressure like if they're only on three gases they're probably going to hit you with roaches and lings ravengers roaches lings and it's going to be some really really aggressive build so I can get to his base. I mean, I see his fourth base now. So he went really greedy, right? He tried to he matched my greed with greed, but most of the time it is not greed with greed, and you'll face something, and you really want to see like what it, what is in his base. So when I come here, I want to see how many gases he's on. So initially, I mean, I see his hydro sense, so I see his tech. So let's say I don't see any tech. Let's say there's no tech in his base, and y you know he's proxied everything, and you want to think to yourself, what could he be going for? And when I see both these gases. And I say, keep going, right? Because I really want to see all the gases. So I'm going to look back. Engaging the enemy. I mean, I didn't. So, I mean, I'm scouting all these things, right? So I have him queued up to all three bases. Because really, he wants to see the gases. Do we ju you see, he's just taking these gases. So we know, even if we didn't see this hydro stem, we could assume maybe Spire in the future, because he is getting the gases now. But it's not going to be that quick mute, is because he's just getting the gases now. So the gases are really an indication of what's going to be quick lurkers, is it going to be quick tech, and we come to this base, we see 2,000 on this gas. So we know all of his gases are quite recent. So we know that he's just went for a really greedy build, he went for four bases, and we see the economies at 75 drones already, right? So he's played really greedy, I've played really greedy. And it's a situation where we're kind of at a, you know, I, I did something to try to get me an edge, he did something to get him an edge. We're kind of even here, and it's a situation where I don't see any spore crawlers as well. Anytime I scout, I never make the dark shrine. I don't really do dark shrine openers, but I don't really make a dark shrine until I scout and I see no spore crawlers. Like seeing no spores anywhere, I'll always throw down a DT shrine. Always, can always be good. So I also with this, I like to always open two observers. You see, I have two observers here. Uh, I like to have one about r right around these little poles things. So I can, uh, you know, see when he comes here a bit, a bit hard to pick off and kind of monitor the creep spread. It's very important. But for, for general, like your general opener is basically you either go for a very greedy third base and then into a robo and a handful of gateways to tech up to disruptors, or you could open something a little bit safer. You could open two gateways, two, or two max eye, the standard two base, then go up to about five gateways, a robo, and then maybe into the disruptors off two bases, and then take a third base. I think disruptors are your main main army, right? I mean, a big thing is getting two to three sentries, so you can scout. You can make sure he's not inspired tech. He's not taking up to quick ultras. But for the most part, like disruptors will keep you safe versus a lot of the armies you face. And it's a situation where, like, it's it's like guessing, right? I mean, how many times is disruptor going to be good? Almost all of them, unless you're facing you just maybe quick ultras, maybe quick broodlords. But unless they're going for things like that, which is unlikely. Most of the time, you'll be very safe just going for something quick disruptor, and it'll be good against ravagers, it'll be good against lurkers, it'll be good against a lot of these things. So basically, your plan, my plan is always get to disruptors, right? In this game, I did go warp prism. You don't have to go warp prism. I went warp prism because I saw he's not attacking me, right? He played greedy. I'm gonna try to harass slow some of that economy down. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Um, I mean, I scout again, right? I could be scouting more diligently every time they hit 100 energy, right? I only have two guys over 100 energy. But I did just scout, right? I see. So basically, after you scout for the first time, right? Now I start scouting when is he going hive. That's your next big indicator. Like, when is he on hive? Because when he's on hive, that's when you really need to be like, okay, something's happening. I need to either pressure him. I need to start attacking up hard. Because once Zer gets to hive tech, it gets tough. It really does. So we'll keep this up. We're going just disruptor, stalker, and things like that. And so. We're also 
keeping tabs on his army here, right? This observer. We see the Hydralisks, we see Lings, we say, okay, this is probably not going to be Mutalisk. I mean, outside chance, but probably not, right? I mean, we see that we see Evo, Roach, Hydra. We do see a Spire here, but for the most part, this is just going to be a standard, a standard, you know, maybe Lings, probably Lurkers. Although I don't believe he goes Lurkers this game. So look at my base. I'm on. I'm making more gateways because my third base is starting to kick in, right? We're on now. We're on 12 or 10 gateways, only on Road and Robo Bay though. I don't really love committing to a second Robo Bay for disruptors because then you're really committed to the ground. And I think something very important is you know you really lock yourself on a ground composition if you get a second Robo Bay. It's okay. But see, my main plan here as well, especially when Zerg's are getting creep, creep, is make a warp prism. So what happens is I actually warp in here with a warp prism only for the sole purpose of taking them out. I didn't I wasn't planning on getting much done here. Maybe I get something done, maybe I don't. That the big purpose is knocking back some of this creep because when your creep gets out of control, that's when you get in trouble. So I come up here, you know, I try to challenge this, I knock back some of this creep, right? We see him and then he sees my army and then you know maybe he starts making units instead of drones. And we knock back even just a little bit, you know. He sees my presence, he says, okay that's that's an army, right? And now he comes and attacks me. Now talking about the engagement here, very important to prioritize things, right? I mean, a lot of us, we only have a limited amount of APM we can use, you know? It's hard to force field and disruptor and blank all, all time warp, all these things. So you got to prioritize, like, what's your most important thing? People ask me, like, should I be force fielding and disruptoring? And I say, disruptors are your main thing, you know? I mean, if you have one, one spell here to use, it's going to be your disruptor. So focus on your disruptor. I mean, worry about these other things when you can get to them. But, you know, when you can use, like, disruptor is your most important thing you want to use. So if you can send out disruptor shots, it will always be good. I mean, so he comes, he kind of surprises me here. But basically, the way you want to handle these engagements, I mean, you can see my hotkeys here. I have one for my army, two for my stalkers, four for my sentries, five for my disruptors. You guys might just have one hotkey. I'm not sure what your hotkeys are, but I really highly recommend... It's almost a must, in my opinion, to have disruptors on a separate hockey. I actually have them on my main hockey and my and this hockey, but at least having them like this, like this, is only okay. I mean, it's better if you have them not in your main army, but this is completely fine. I mean, just having them in the army, so this is just makes things so much easier. So basically, what you want to do is you press disruptor shot and then pull back. So if we really slow this down and we see what I'm doing, I'm trying to shoot these disruptors, land them, and pull them back at the same time. So we shoot. And we're pressing five and we're pulling back. All right, so if we look at my army right here, the disruptors are trying to get back here. Although he's got a strong army, but you just kind of land these detonations, and it's very important. So you try to pull them back, try to keep them alive. The threat is always important. Right? And it's a situation where, you know, it's all about kind of composition, right? I and mean, this is a situation in the game that we kind of were expecting an army like this. Maybe we were expecting a few extra lurkers. But, you know, with our scouting, we see, okay, we did see he's going up to Hive, so we were thinking, okay, maybe we do need to attack him now. But it's a situation where we see, you know, Roaches, Lurkers, or Roaches, Hydras, like, this is a committed army. Like, he's really committed a lot to this. I mean, you see he's got a huge bank, but he commits quite a bit to this. So, this is an army you'll face quite a bit. Maybe not even the Hydras, but just the Roaches and Ravagers. And Blank Stalker Disruptor, very, very good against it. And, uh, you know, it's something that really is one of your strongest armies and I know disruptor shots are tough but it's one of those things you keep practicing keep practicing they'll pay out in the wrong, long run trust me trust me so eventually we do end up holding this it's pretty close I actually forgot blink this game see me uh, trying to get it out here so that fight would have been a lot cleaner if I had blink but it's also keeping tabs on his base right I mean I see he's got this base and I'm like okay he's got a lot of bases here that's that's an issue you know he's got all these bases so I think to myself, like, how can we deal with all these bases? Warp Prism, maybe. You know, spread them out. Because so many bases, spread them out a little bit. I mean, we're kind of stuck on these amount of bases. We're in a tough spot here, right? But honestly, from this point on, you know, your experience will be your experience. He might go Broodlords. He might go Ultras on you. He might go Lurkers on you. There's so many different builds that he could end up going on you. And I think the biggest thing to remember is the opener. I mean... Most of your builds, I mean, there's every game will branch out into something new. And that's the big thing to remember when you're playing the game. Like, every single game you have is a different experience. That's why it's hard to follow a build order. And you follow this build order, you go three, you go like three next day, quick greedy next day. And you lose this build, and you're like, hmm, I don't think that build's very good. 
And it's a situation where you play it over and over and over and over, over, over again until you finally realize, maybe this is actually okay. Because until there's many, many games of trial and error, you're not sure if a build's good or not. So, like, just because you lose, you know, three straight games to some super cheesy build, doesn't mean your build is technically bad. It means maybe you got a tough, tough end of the build order. I mean, there's so many things that go on in a game, right? I mean, I could have gone this style, he could have gone quick ultras, right? And I mean, does it mean my build is bad? No, it doesn't mean your build is bad. No, it means, you know, things happened and things might not have gone the way. Maybe you could have scouted better, maybe you could have been more diligent poking at his front, maybe you could have gone something more aggressive, things like that. So, really, from this point on, the game is not as important. I mean, I'll, I think I'll go into the later game, maybe in another video. But for now, this point on, even just on three base and on, it should really be just your scouting, see what army comp he goes for, and just try to handle it, right? I mean, Disruptor, Blink Stalker will let you handle many of these armies. Ravager, Lurkers, pretty much all armies this army can handle. It really can. It's got a lot of firepower, it's got a lot of strength. So I really recommend trying to get something like this somewhere here. And this is your goal composition. Like, not you don't even need the Archon, some Adepts maybe. But basically, this is your main goal here. And if you can get to this, you'll win a lot of games versus Zerg. Just keep the scouting up. Keep tabs on his tech. And, you know, pressure when you can. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed And I'll do some things. Tell me some things you guys want to see in the next video. And maybe more things you want me to touch on. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And thank you guys for being here.